Today, we're gonna to be starting our tier one series covering the starting point labs on Hack the Box. Uh, this will be reviewing the appointment box covering SQL and some of those vulnerabilities. Let's check it out. Okay, uh, our VPN is live and our target machine IP is here. So first we'll begin by making a directory for this box and then seeding into it. And then we'll start it off by starting a service script scan, ignoring host discovery, and then outputting this into an initial and map scan file with the IP. I'll see you guys soon. Looking at our scans, we only got one port back. Uh, it's running Apache. So let's head over to our browser and see what we got. Um, we can first look at the source to see if there's anything. Just CSS. There's no additional like hidden dev comments or um, username uh, hints anywhere. Um, we can start off by trying to guess default credentials, uh, admin, admin, administrator, password, um, root, root, um, but we see none of that is working, right? So if we go back to our hack the box page, uh, we can see that this has the SQL, and SQL injection tag. Um, so we probably have to see if this login form has a potential SQL injection vulnerability. Let's clear the screen. Um, so the way that SQL injection works, uh, when you type your username and um, your password, both uh, sets of data are passed to the database. Um, and then this database checks its table that you provided the correct credentials uh, before providing access. Um, it kind of looks like this. So taking this example, um, if you log into the page where both the username and the password are user controlled. So if we change this username to, I don't know, Bob, and then the password is password123, um, if Bob provided the correct username and password, uh, they will be able to log in. In our case, we don't have any credentials for us to use. Um, so when we attempt SQL injection, um, basically the application insecurely protects against input validation. So this is user controlled input. Um, we're able to control the username and the password here uh, and potentially use special characters in order to trick the query of the database. So for example, if there is no input validation, um, if we pass the user admin, right, and we close off this username and then insert a hashtag or pound sign depending on your generation this basically comments out the rest of the query to where it'll look like this to the database so this query will go to the table called users in the database look for the username named admin and if it finds a user called admin, it'll automatically create a new session without checking permissions or passwords or anything. Okay, so let's try that out. So we're gonna go back to this login page, type in admin apostrophe 
and then a hashtag. And we're not able to log in because we had to provide some sort of input here. So I just did a random letter and there's your flag. Congratulations. Now there are tons of bypasses for authentication out there. So if we go to GitHub, SQL injection payloads, um, go here, check out intruder payloads, actually um, exploit auth bypass. Um, eventually we'll get into like running burp suite and intruder and um, having to throw a list of payloads at a target. But as you can see there, just off, off this small list, there are a ton available. So let's get into answering some of these questions. Um, what does the acronym SQL stand for? Now this is structured query language. Awesome. What is one of the most common types of SQL vulnerabilities? And that is what we just performed, SQL injection. What does PII stand for? So this is personally identifiable information. Basically all your name, usernames, email addresses, date of birth, like that kind of stuff. Submit. Okay, next one. What does the OWASP top 10 list name the classification for this vulnerability? So if you're not familiar with OWASP top 10, For 2021, it would be injection. So this is what it's looking for. Um, if you haven't reviewed any of these, it, I highly suggest it just so you can get a better understanding of uh, the different vulnerabilities and classes out there and how they rack and stack against each other. Hey, what service and version are running on port 80 of the target? Uh, we can cat our initial nmap scan and throw this in. What is the standard port used for HTTPS? This is uh, 443, but if you did not know, you can cat Etsy services and then grep HTTPS. And you can see it's 443. What is one luck based method of exploiting a login page? Um, this is brute forcing, and it's basically an attack where you use trial and error, sending like a dictionary uh, list of usernames or passwords or encryption keys or whatever. Uh, trying to guess their correct pairing in order to log in. Okay, what is a folder called in web application terminology? Uh, this is a directory. What response code is given for not found errors? Uh, so generally response codes are the HTTP responses. So this is when you send a GET or POST request to the server, the server will respond with a response code. Uh, generally 400s are uh, client errors. Um, so this would be a 404. Um, 500s are generally like server errors. 200s are um, success, like, and then I think ones are informational. What response code is given for not found errors? Um, this is 404. So server response codes, um, this is when you send a git or post request to the server and the server will respond with a with a code. Uh, generally, the 400 series are 
client errors and 500 are um, server errors, 200s are successful, um, etc. I highly recommend looking these up. Uh, they're pretty beneficial when moving forward uh, when testing applications uh, specifically in web. And we can go ahead and submit that one. Move on to the next. Uh, what switch do we use with GoBuster to specify we're looking to discover directories and not subdomains? Um, we haven't messed with GoBuster yet in this series, I don't think. Uh, I may have ran through it with my try hackney one, but the switch is dir to specify with GoBuster. Uh, if we just type in GoBuster, um, you can see all the available commands and switches. And for directory file enumeration, it's dir. What symbol do we use to comment parts of the code? That's the hashtag or pound sign. And then the best part, submit the root flag, which we already got earlier. And congratulations, you finished uh, appointment. If you guys enjoyed watching this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Go hack that YouTube algorithm for me and boost that engagement. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next one.